in this day and age when it comes to social media, do you think that people will eventually forget what J.R. Smith did? Never. Hell no. Never. Hell no. He's up there. He's up there. What's that guy from Boston? Bill Buckner? The, the, the baseball the dude? The baseball dude, yeah. Yeah, he, he's up there. Chris Webber with the timeout. He's up there. Is Yeah, I hate to say I do feel like at a certain point people are going to forget. Nah. People no. forget. People forget. They get mad at shit in one second, and then another day they just completely just disregard everything. You know why they're not going to forget? Because they're going to go back to this moment as when LeBron left Cleveland for the second time. Yeah. That picture of him. Yeah, and I got LeBron Jerry. leaving for a third time. <laughs> From keeping it a buck. Yeah. He's coming to New York, hopefully. Well, then he definitely is going to leave don't him after good. that. Don't, don't laugh. <laughs> don't laugh. Don't laugh. No, He's we don't, we, we don't leave. need him injury things. prone. We need him healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Want to see his legacy live on a little bit. Don't need that shit. Word. <laughs> Fuck it. Uh, I'm Brandon Kill BHR. I'm Aaron Ashley Simon. Regular Nas. Yo, oh, all right. Hold on. <laughs> Don't you notice oh, everyone in the room now pans to you to hope that, that you nail the intro. And sure enough, regular nut. Like, you, it, it just never. <laughs> yeah, do the voice. It's, 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 it's just never. I've been practicing. It's just never. You don't execute well, man. Oh, man. So, <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, really boys and girls, let's get into the shits. So, uh, NBA Finals started. Yeah. Um, what a game. Let's let's talk LeBron first. Um, I feel bad for LeBron. I never thought I'd say that, but I, mm. I do feel bad for LeBron. Yeah. They need that uh, Tyrese meme. What more do you want from me? Yeah. <laughs> 51, yeah. 8, and 8. What more, man? I don't really feel bad, though. Savage. I don't, because, I mean, the situation he's in, from what I'm hearing from reports, he kind of made it that way. <laughs> he orchestrated well, well, yeah. He made yeah, it he, that he way. Def- he definitely you know? did. He definitely did. Because you had a supporting player like Kyrie, someone that you could depend on if you had a bad game. And now it's like you got some people who, you know, have, 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 have stepped up a little bit, but no one so far has stepped up to the capacity of what LeBron's doing. Nope. They no one. And they're not going to. Like, no offense to them, but there's very few players in the league who can really step up to the plate or step up to the court as well as LeBron does. Yeah. Um, what What do we think about the mistake from JR, though? <laughs> 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 Niggas just laugh. That's, that's what you know is bad. We just uh, start dying laughing. Okay, my thing is, like, when when like as an as a former athlete like it doesn't matter what the score is you want to win and especially in a finals game like and it's against a team that's your rivalry i want to annihilate them yeah, why sure. are you saying oh i thought we were up no dog it doesn't matter <laughs> keep scoring yeah. what are you talking about yeah i'm not rolling <laughs> yeah, he didn't he didn't know man he's absent minded well man. if you if you look at the playback cuz i studied it after my the tears came from my face and looking at, <laughs> at lebron's reaction he's lebron has his hand that's where the meme comes from and says, fam, what the fuck are you doing? He wanted, and, to, play, yo, he wanted, he to, wanted, he wanted to square up. He and, then, <laughs> and then and then the confusion on JR's face as he says, I thought we were up. I was like, ah. Oh. You know what's sad about that, though? JR messed up, but LeBron's the one that was made into a meme. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. sucks. It sucks, man. Dog, you're not even the one that messed up, and you are the joke. <laughs> what, do you want, what more do you want from that guy, man? But here's my thing. What's what's worse, the, the press conference following <laughs> his, them his, di- his diva moment? His, his, <laughs> them shorts. I don't, I, I don't know which one takes the cake. And uh, let's start. So let's start with JR's press conference where they ask him, yo. Oh, chill. <laughs> <laughs> they asked him, so so it's like he was cheating and he got caught. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me, the, the post game interviews are similar to uh, the post fight interviews in boxing. <laughs> it's the greatest part of the sport where you get to have these intellectual conversations and or questions asked where they say, So, JR, walk me through the events that took place at the end of the game. George shot a free. You see the confusion. JR was like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I, I grabbed the ball and, you know, I, um, 
I, I went to go for a shot, but I wasn't gonna shoot over KD. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> the lies. <laughs> <laughs> I went. I, I went out. You know what I'm saying? And um. And then the reporter's like, uh, I, I, yeah, that's fine. Listen, uh, did you know the score? And then Jr. is like, I, I knew the score. And I'm like. Mm. He's a professional liar. You could tell, like, his shorty cornered him a couple of times. Like, yo, explain. Yeah, it was bad. Professional lying, yo. He sounded like <laughs> Tristan Thompson. I was pressured. Yeah, it was bad. It was bad. <laughs> That's why I said You know, he's an thoughts. idiot. He, he's an idiot. <laughs> yeah, it was Paying bad. Paying pressure to throw my face in some Tito bitties. It was bad. <laughs> like, come on, man. Oh, it was bad. <laughs> And Ooh, then, <laughs> and you can't. Go. Yeah, I, this is this is a LeBron supporting cast. Yeah, just uh, think about the lies these Negroes were saying. Yo, it's all bad when you really think about it. Like none of them could tell a lie. Like they just all fucking up plays, relationships, everything. They try it so hard because they don't want that smoke from LeBron. Like, yeah, you know. Word, word. And I then, saw it, but you know, I, I couldn't yeah. shit over. I was, I was, I was trying to get to LeBron. And then, and, and, and Please then, believe. Me. And then LeBron. Oh, poor LeBron during the press conference. Did he think that the game was tied, or did he think that you guys had it salted away? How do I know that? Or did you discuss it at all with him at the end of the play? No. They asked me if I talked to JR about it. I said no already. I knew it was a tie game. We, met, we, we was down one. Um, George Hill went up. He made the first one. We got the offensive rebound. You know, I thought we were all aware of what was going on. That's my view, so... I don't know what JR was thinking. I don't know the question that you're trying to ask. I was just trying to see if you, you knew exactly what his state of mind was. Did he think that you guys had it won, or did he think he was trying to make a play? No. Not sure. What do you mean I'm not sure? No, I don't know his state of mind. Did you know if he knew the score? Thank you. Hold on. So, are we talking about LeBron shorts or just the, the, the knee like, knickers? There's, there's a Can lot we just going. Talk about everything that just occurred <laughs> in that press conference because all of it. He had knee was knickers on. Dudes out here wearing gauchos. He, it, LeBron like, was old boy. Yeah, LeBron was walking <laughs> in, 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 in pure. <laughs> he was he was wearing these shorts that were just too small for him to be six seven six eight whatever he is, and then stands up during the you press can't be conference. Mad. You can't and be then it's like. I don't have time for this. <laughs> Had it Wait, deal. grab the bag. Grab the bag. Gra grabs bag. <laughs> Be better tomorrow. <laughs> Walks off. Head held high. Like, damn. Dude, when you, when you, as. No, you're six eight and you pinch your yeah. pants. Yeah, you can't you can't be six eight, pinch your pants, and then grab a man purse like this and, and walk. You can't do that. But fam. you know what's crazy? Even when he does pull down his pants, it's not like it goes any farther but than that where was it is. Like, they, <laughs> you already held them up past the knees. They didn't like, go nowhere. They're just <laughs> in the same spot. It's like, <laughs> all right, never mind. <laughs> That's not going down. You know oh, what, man? man? Whoever's on his team, Rich Paul, Savannah. Y'all wrong for that. Y'all supposed to love him. Yeah. Y'all supposed to tell him, like, fam, don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, man. I, I, I do feel bad for LeBron. I do think um, that this does alter uh, the finals now. You know what I'm saying? Cavs had a great opportunity to steal a win, um, you know, away from the Warriors in their hometown. And then, like I said, the moment I saw it was overtime, I, I, I almost turned it up. I was like, all right, no, this shit is over. You can't give the, them that much no. time. Mm -hmm. You can't give the Warriors that much time. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I think that this definitely alters the series. If they get a win in, 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 in Golden State. They're not. It's over, man. Well, they, no, well it's over now because they yeah. lost. I'm saying if they got the win. That's a moral defeat, bro. Listen, they were lucky that the trifecta wasn't all on. That, Steph, yeah. uh, Katie, and Clay. And, like, e and Iguodala being out. If he, yeah, God forbid, he comes gosh. back. They, fam, kiss the baby. But y'all see Nick Young out there? Nick, you Swaggy P? You saw Swaggy P out there? Can we, can we, are we still calling him Swaggy P? What's Swaggy Bama. about? Like, for real. Swaggy <laughs> can we get into that? What, like, well, why are we calling him Swaggy P? 
Is that self-proclaimed? Like, yeah. where does that name come from? That's, I don't know. That's a self, yeah, that is. But listen. He gave himself that nickname, so it really doesn't count. I'm still comfortable calling asterisk. him Swaggy P. That's just wild. Maybe, maybe he was Swaggy from jumping from the Lakers straight to the winning team. Yeah, I don't, well, <laughs> No, he had, that, he had Swaggy P prior. Yeah, that's, prior swag, that's Swag. That's Swag. I'll say that's Swag. That's Swag. That's you swag. leave the Lakers and you go to a winning team. You Wait, get but some nothing, ring. nothing about I don't like. I don't like you talking about the Lakers like that. I don't appreciate that. Listen, well, every team has gone through their error like that. Yeah, Lakers but we, had it. we ain't been right yeah, since. Listen, Lonzo Ball. Yes. Don't be disrespectful. Yo, y'all literally had. Ball of brand. Okay, first of all, he, Yo. you Lakers literally had, <laughs> they get like, $5 what? Million. You guys had, like, like, two different decades of dominance. Yeah. Kobe, Jelly Bean. Kobe, Bryant. Magic Johnson. Like, come on. Well, it's all right if you guys have one horrible decade. Yeah, I can't. I can't. They're not, though. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. They're not. I don't know. Do we do we think LeBron is going to the Lakers? I hope not. Listen, or ooh, Sixers too, maybe. No, it's not. It's uh, not going to happen. I, I wouldn't be surprised. JJ, you got to resign JJ Redick, who was a valuable piece of that team. You also got to resign Bellinelli, who was a valuable piece. Yeah, but some of the other players, the key players, they're all in their rookie contract still. You think yeah. you think you'll get JJ Redick for anything under twenty five million dollars? No. You know, <laughs> yeah, he probably. said, yeah. <laughs> so he signed a one year, twenty. Yeah, he signed a one year deal. Yeah. yeah. Why would I go backwards? I'm not hustling backwards. Yeah, I don't. Th- I don't think. I don't think that's happening. I don't know. I'm. I'm curious to see what I happens. I mean, though. hey, you take a pay cut. LeBron has taken a pay cut. Uh, I'm not taking that pay cut. That's a big pay cut. <laughs> well, he's making the same amount back from endorsements. He's all right. He's all right if you take that pay cut. You're all right. Who, who does JJ Redick endorse? No, I'm talking about um, talking LeBron, LeBron taking a oh, pay cut. Yeah. But that Nike deal, he all right. I'm, if I'm LeBron, I'm definitely not taking a pay cut. I make $2 million. Listen, no, uh, LeBron invested in, was it Liverpool? Right. And he's making money from a soccer team, soccer in, team. A, in addition to the Nike. Like, this dude invested so much I'm money. Not, I just put right. up 51, 8, and 8 in game one. I'm angry. I'm not taking And my cut. shorts don't come down. Pay me. <laughs> Me and my man purse. Word. Pay me. I right, keep them shorts on. <laughs> oh, man, so stay tuned. Uh, I'm excited to uh, see this the next game. I want to see what what the the energy is like. Mm, I don't know. Hey, well, if KD gets back on, uh, yeah, yeah. If nah, KD if KD is not having an off night, if KD doesn't have an off night, Steph Curry is making threes, and if Clay and if goes Clay, off, yeah. that's it. Nope. Yeah. That's it. Now, what happened with Clay's knee? I know it was like a... JR uh, tried to sabotage. He slid. JR yeah. slid. He slid into He him. slid going like... But, 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 went, but went into the... <laughs> <laughs> went into his like... Don't do that. <laughs> yo, <laughs> yo yeah, having JR slide like that is crazy. <laughs> That's I crazy. mean, it's kind of like that. <laughs> Don't do that. That's wild. <laughs> uh, so what do, do, do what it back to back. Y'all got to better do a back to back video with that one. <laughs> That's <Yo>. wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why are we so silly today? Oh man! All right, I um, the weather. So, all right. So, segueing, uh, Kanye finally released his uh, anticipated <laughs> album. Uh, yay! Um, I think I'm the only person in the room next to Nas that has listened to this project and obsessed about it. Um, mm. No, I listened to it. No, I said except for Nas. Oh. I didn't even know this guy. Fuck. Where am I today? Them old ears. <laughs> Here we go. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Listen, I, I wouldn't have said that if it didn't happen twice. When I was like, what? This is your middle name? You're like, what'd you say? Yeah, oh, yeah. Pretty, yeah, I was pretty. See, why, why are you bringing up that? What, man, nobody know what you're talking about. Why are you bring that up? <laughs> you're lucky I didn't say what it was, though. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So, um, so let's go. Let's talk. Um, well, first, let's get into track listing and then, uh, I guess, first overall impression of it. So track listing obviously consists of seven records. Um, first record is called I Thought About Killing You. Second one is called Yikes. Third, All Mine. Fourth, Wouldn't Leave. Uh, fifth, No Mistakes. And uh, sixth, Ghost Town. Last, Violent Crimes. Um, f- for me, I'll start. So for me, uh, on first listen, um, I was disappointed. On second listen, I was um, it, it it went from disappointment to a little bit more of appreciation production wise. I for me, uh, Kanye is two for two production wise between Push's album and this album. I, I love the musical transitions. I love um, a lot of the different unique sounds. Um, you can tell that he's been very um, critical on his sound selection this go round. Um, and then when it when it comes to lyrics, um, 
that's where I, I'm a little <laughs> in, I'm a little impartial. I'm a little impartial there. I also think about holistically and sonically for me, um, the project it 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 doesn't it takes you on a roller coaster. Like I like I love uh, Yikes. Yikes to me is 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 a really really dope record, and then I like uh, elements of other records. Do I, I? I don't. I just. I still. It, it, it's a lot to process, and I think you know we're gonna do a deep dive today into the actual music and lyrics, because mm-hmm. um, I'm a little. For me personally, I'm just conflicted. I have you know a little confliction in me a little bit. So what? What are, what are your thoughts? What do you think? I think it's a decent album, but I was very disappointed in him comparing Tristan Thomas Thompson to a Kobe Bean Bryant. That's ridiculous. Yeah. But other than that, wouldn't leave is dope. Uh, first track. Was that? I don't know the name of it. Was it I kill, kill myself or something like that? Oh. I thought about killing you. I thought yeah. about killing you. <laughs> Con- I thought that concept was dope, and I really do like uh, Ghost Town. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. Uh yeah, I didn't listen to it. <laughs> I mean, I obviously I did do. Be better tomorrow. <laughs> I'm always better. <laughs> I'm always better. Watch, listen. Um, so the reason why I didn't listen to it is because <clears throat> I didn't want to be influenced or swayed by his production. Mm-hmm. I wanted to review it, you know, review the substance and review the lyrics without, you know, taking into, you know, or, or, or really listening to the production. Because obviously when it comes to his productions, they're they're solid. And it makes people feel a certain way. They may be like, oh my God, this, this song is really great. But it's actually the production that is great and not really the substance of it. Mm-hmm. So instead of actually listening to it, I did a deep dive into the lyrics and did extensive research when it came to it. And because I didn't listen to it, it allowed me to kind of like have a clean slate when it comes to evaluating his lyrics. And the reason why... A lot of what he has in it is very confusing because he he touches on the concept of duality and duality in the sense of like even for Tristan Thompson and Kobe, I can look at that as a duality of 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 greatness and, you know, just entry level celebrity stardom. Mm. Um, But then also there's a duality in the sense of genius level and misinterpretation of being a genius and someone who can't really explain his own thoughts, but then also a duality in the sense of manic depression and bipolar and the sense of people who go through that, others may not still understand the things that they discuss or go through within that. Obviously, I'll do a deeper dive when we go into those individual songs, Mm -hmm. but that's what I was getting from the lyrics, and I really wanted to this time not be swayed by production and just really wanted to just dive into those lyrics more. Yeah, that's a crazy And and also, um, I couldn't listen to it, too, because they say that you should be separating the art from the artist. But Kanye is really hard to do that because he himself is the art. That's what that's where I struggle with. Um, and I found myself doing this. I, I must have listened to this album a good 50 times by now. No exaggeration. And only reason is because um, I found it hard to separate uh, Kanye, the, the person with this body of work and then be it Kanye the person and, and the actions leading up to this body, the, the, the project being released. So for me, it was, um, I was looking to kind of get answers. And I got answers um, a little bit along the lines of, of what you're saying, Aaron. Mm-hmm. And then I got a little bit more answers when we, when we start to do the deep dive into the music and into just the lyrics. But for me, um, it, it this isn't, it's not something that... Um, you can really go into this and and just like holistically enjoy and just be like, oh my god, every record is it, it. It's not that for me. If you're if you're going in with the the intentions that I had going into it, if you're going mm. in to just try to get a vibe and, and trying to go into this, this music to get a sound, you'll get that. You'll you'll definitely get it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but overall, for me, um, I, I have these. There's a few things that you know stuck out for me. So, I mean, I guess let's let's get into Deep Dive now. So I just want to say that's a crazy way to look at the album or to listen to it is just to take the lyrics and read it mm-hmm. and dissect the lyrics like that and then go and listen to the album. It's awesome. It's a little weird, but it's awesome, too. That's, that's so a, weird. That's some journalistic shit. Yeah. Cause more, the average person wouldn't do that. They wouldn't just take time out to, not weird in a bad way, 
Which is unique, I should say, rather. There you go. I got it. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I mean, <laughs> when you think about it, like, I, it, some people, like, Aaron... Erin's take is not listening to it. For me, I, I her her reading is my listening. I exhaust myself into music, into projects. Like I listen from the morning until night, from the morning until night, because for me, that's how I digest. I I, I first listen for a few different reasons. First, I want to hear what what where are we going with this. Secondly, I want to hear the sounds. Third, I want to hear the content, and then fourth. I want to say, okay, what does this project represent? What does this say about you as an artist? What 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 are you trying to convey? And that's where, for me, um, I just think there's some hidden things there. I'll say. So, I mean, all right. So let's get into uh, the first record. Um, Thought about killing you. Okay. Um, for me, I think. Um, you know, I struggled with the beginning of the record because he, he talks, it, it, it's almost like a, um, it's spoken word almost. Like he, he talks a lot, a lot about loving himself and but wanting to kill, you know, someone. And I thought about, well, I don't know if he really thinks about killing someone. But then, you know, as I did research, that's actually a normal thing. You, your brain walks through the steps oftentimes of like robbing banks, how you would plan it out, how you would kill someone and get through. Um, you know, getting away with it. So that's normal. And then I thought about when he mentions, uh, you know, the bipolar in the um, the subhead of the uh, album artwork, and I thought, okay, maybe he is struggling with the fact of wanting to kill his alter ego or the, I guess, the bipolar persona that he has. So... I, I don't. I don't know. I don't. Uh, the the first record, and and while I I like, um, again musically the direction. That's where I got from that first record. I don't. I don't get um, anything more than that. I know I read stuff like, oh, he's talking about killing uh, Kim Kardashian. And I'm like, I'm like he's fam. Like knock it off. No, he's not. He's not talking about that. He's he's not. It's not that cut and dry with them. It never is. Um, so yeah, what what did you think? I thought that. Uh he exposed himself on that record. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and it's something I can appreciate because even in the record, he talks about saying, he says stuff that normal, you know, people normally wouldn't say or he admits to things no, people normally wouldn't admit to. And, you know, I thought about killing you and then because I, I thought about killing myself and I love me way more than I love you. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I can understand that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, in a weird way, I could definitely understand that. So... It, I think again. I think it's just a dope record, man. Mm -hmm. I think. I think. I, I really enjoyed it. Aaron, what? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that face though. Um, <laughs> so, the <clears throat> one of the things that really stuck out to me. Yo, just a note. Anytime Aaron goes, <clears throat> you know she's about to get. This. I don't know if anyone has peeped that, but anytime she. Just <clears throat> yeah, it's the pollen too. You, you know she's about to get into some shit. Yeah, it's the pollen too out there. Um, so the one thing that kind of stood out to me, like I said, is this common theme of duality um everything from him uh talking in third person talking to someone who happens just to be himself i mean kanye is a gemini so there's always that whole thing about two different sides to yourselves yeah so he talks about that but even within that song he talks about um the different sides and the contrast of of light and dark and the contrast within the definition of beauty itself uh, if you look back on some philosophers like Socrates and, and, and Plato, you know, there are certain ones that say that the beauty is viewed is subject is subjective and objective. But then there's also um, uh, this philosopher or this guy, his name is Wolflin, and he talks about how beauty is more so about the arrangements of parts. It's kind of like harmony. It is when you take the imperfections and you find something special within those imperfections. And it's funny that it is tied to that harmony concept, which goes back to the number seven, mm -hmm. um, which is tied into all of this. And what I thought also thought was like he it seems like a part of him is at peace with his imperfections and, and, and find some beauty within those imperfections, because it kind of goes back to like most geniuses are crazy. They mm -hmm. are. And for him to kind of identify that and say that he finds some beauty within that, and he he realizes that the reason why he is great at what he does or he is who he is, it's because he has those uh, crazy imperfections about mm -hmm. himself. Mm -hmm. And I think part of it is, you know, within that song, it's kind of like a battle between 
um, kind of like hating yourself and loving yourself, which is something that we all go through. Mm -hmm. You know, there's days that we hate ourselves and some people even think about taking their own lives, but then there, but for him, it's like, even during those, those darkness, he finds some sense of harmony and some sense of beauty and, and being okay with that side. So interesting enough, I felt like it was like, it, 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 a little bit, it felt like two people were talking at the same time. I don't know if it comes across as like conversational or not, but I just felt like two sides of him were talking at the same time. Maybe not in the, in exact order, but like kind of like um, like if someone's is, is is schizophrenia and like they're hearing one voice, but then they're thinking something else, or or their mindset's a different in a different state. Um, but like I said, that also ties back to him being bipolar and also manic depressive about, you know, sides of being manic depressive, impulsive, um, just doing things and maybe even thinking well, things out of nowhere. So, well, that's the other thing I got from it, too. A, a lot of it I got is that he he's battling his own demons internally, like as he's pro you can see where he's juggling so many emotions and, and, and just thoughts that he doesn't even kind of know who he is. When, when, when you really get down to it, he doesn't really understand, even though he says it in the records um, and throughout the, the, the project, he talks a lot about, um, you know, loving himself. And, and he says, uh, you know, I, I wish I could say that, you know, I wasn't self-aware, but that's not the case, things like yeah. that. I, I kind of do think it, that that is the case. Like he still battles with just himself. Mm -hmm. He talked a lot about, um, you know, saying things just to just to see how they feel. I kind of low-key feel like that's where the Trump shit came from. I, I don't even think that he really believes some of the stuff that he says. He's just but doing it to do just it? But to, just to be able to say it, to see how it feels to say it, yeah. does something for him, which I found I just found to be interesting. I also think part of, I mean, I could be wrong, but listening to this project, I feel like part of the reason why he did the stuff recently with tweets is maybe he couldn't realize what part of the source was when it comes to how he feels about himself. And then he started to realize, like, you know what? The media is part of this. The media, mm -hmm. and, he, and he talked about that. He actually did a rant um, for uh, The Life of Pablo in Boston where he goes on and says that the media makes you feel horrible about yourself and basically yeah. like the media makes you hate yourself. And I think, you know, Although he, he might have exe executed wrong, I think that was maybe a way for him to kind of like realize what is some of the source of his own misery in a sense. But he said that too at the uh, TMZ when he made the slavery comment. He said, I got liposuction because of you guys. Because you were going to call me fat. And I didn't want you calling me fat. You know, he admits the stuff that people try to keep deep down inside. And I think you know, to what you're saying, that's what makes this record dope, is that do developing who we are, we, we as people are always changing. Who I was 10 years ago is different from the person I'm going to be 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. And Kanye, he accepts and he brings that out in his records. And I think that's still, his evolution is superb. <laughs> superb is a big word. I, I know. I, I pick my I pick my words. Uh, yeah, we got a word of the day yeah. every episode. We should just do word of the day every, every day. <laughs> Regular um, nuz. <laughs> all right, so 2018 dictionary edition. So the other record um, that stands out to me is all mine. Um, there's there's a few different things with all mine that um, for me I was like it was it's interesting perspectives on it for me. So when he when he talks about um, this record, he talks a lot about um, it was a line in there for me uh, that kind of stood out, and I you can tell that he still deals with these battles. Now it, it then led me to Kim Kardashian. So he talks about um, you know he makes the reference about uh, Tristan Thompson, you know about you know pretty much fucking with a chick if you're not of that caliber of basketball player that they will leave it like you don't get the pass so i i i, I did take that as a jab at, <laughs> at tristan thompson like fam you're not that nice to be out here cheating like you wilding <laughs> um but then um there was a line there where he says um what is it i could have a uh, naomi campbell and still might want to um and still might want a stormy daniels that's dope which <laughs> it, it it's crazy because and the reason why it goes to Kim for me is because, you know, she's like the trophy wife for him. And to most people, like she is like, you know, the perfect woman 
physically. I don't know what people think about her. You Morally, know. Yeah, yeah, different. I, I don't know what people think about her in that scope, but she's the ideal person that you know he would want to be with and he's always admired. And to finally get something that he wants and still, you know, in his brain, want something lesser than and still be attracted to him, still want stuff like that on a daily day uh, day to day basis. It, I think it was like a it was a normal thing. You it's know what human. I mean? Like it's 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 a human thing. Yeah. I, he's very uh, open. He's a little bit more open in this project than than what I thought would be. Um, and I said this early on, you know, obviously before the recording that. While this body of work is only seven records and in twenty minutes or whatever it is, there's really a lot to digest in this music. Yeah. It really, really is content heavy. Yeah, it really is. If you're really, really listening to a lot of the stuff that he's saying, it's 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 it'll lead you in all different kinds of directions, and that's why I don't know how I feel about it as of like as of yet. So I don't know, man. I, I enjoyed it. I mean, it's not one of my favorite <laughs> records on the album, mm -hmm. but it's a good song. You know, yeah. He's like, like I said before, he he's all exposed, and that's what makes Kanye dope. Is that you know he's not really he's not really rapping rapping, but it's more spoken word put to beat. Mm -hmm. And he's just like, yo, this is me. I'm I'm messed up. I'm imperfect. I'm a little crazy, and it's cool because I got everybody in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Yeah, bopping the hip hop. <laughs> well, even even with the location, um, I I think. That and everyone kept saying, and I couldn't even figure it out. Like, what's in in, in Wyoming? Like, why Wyoming? Why bring all of you calmness? Know? It's calm out there. Yeah. It's nothing but mountains. But yeah. even even also, that's what I that's what I got from it. For it's it's so, you know, like isolated. I I think that that's his safe haven. You know what I'm saying? Like that's where he can kind of go and just be him. It's, it's similar to when Dave Chappelle went to Africa. Or Ohio, wherever the fuck I can't remember where he went. But he went to Africa. He lives Africa, in Ohio. yeah. And and he said, you know, it was the first time in years where, you know, I can just walk around the town and people didn't treat me like I was Dave Chappelle. Like they just, you know, like, hey, how's how's it going? You know what I'm saying? And I wonder if Kanye brought them, you know, all of these creatives there for that reason to kind of maybe get a sense of that or yeah. to to be a part of his his. Calm. Well, I mean, that goes back to what I was saying before, how Kanye finds beauty within things that others may not mm -hmm. find. Um, so for you, you know, you may not, you may be like, well, why Wyoming? I'm not going to Wyoming. But for him, that's like there's something, some comfort and solace and, and, and obviously beauty in the sense of um, the mountains and everything. And I think that's, I think for Kim to say that he took that cover photo on the way there is just that sudden moment of beauty that he found he wanted to capture. Mm -hmm. I think that's, something that he's trying to portray in his music in a similar way of like how he tried to show it within his photo. Um, when it came to the line about Tristan and Kobe, um, with that, I also think it is um, basically just saying that if you're at a certain level, you uh, uh, if your man is at a certain level um, and he does something like he's going to leave you. Like, if you're a regular Joe Schmo, he's going to leave you or anything like that. But then also, interestingly, he's he's kind of explained, like, <laughs> several reasons why, like, if shit goes down, your man's going to leave you if you're a celeb. Like, he talked about it in Gold Digger. Mm -hmm. He's saying, like, he's you know he's going to leave your ass for a white girl. Yeah. You know, if, if shit, you keep doing the same shit, he's going to leave your ass for a white girl. Um, but then also, I think he made reference even to his own relationship with Kim in a sense of, like, you know, you can leave too. In uh, what is it? Wood leaf. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So wouldn't leave. Yeah. Wouldn't leave. Yes. So it's like I said, it, it still goes back to that whole duality concept, but then also it touches on the impulsive nature, impulsive nature of not just mental health, but the impulsive nature of that can be accompanied within, um, men's, uh, within being a celebrity and everything like that. And I also found it really interesting how he talks about you know, just the physical aspect of certain women where he was saying, like, I love your kitties because they prove I can focus on two things at once. That's another Tittle, duality uh, reference. But mm -hmm. also in in another song, he talks about um, for violent crimes. He's he's talking about his daughter and saying, like, I, I really hope you don't yeah. get those same traits that I look at. 
And of course, like anytime a man has a daughter, his thought process is going to be different. But still, the fact that he's able to still identify that he still has impulsive behaviors that are attached to those characteristics and those traits of a woman, but that he doesn't want to see the same thing in his daughter, kind of like not seeing like the, the, the cycle continuing again. Um, that in itself is just like, and that's why I feel like it's so confusing for everyone is because the the thought processes that usually you would have coincide like one after the other, he's trickling in all different parts of his song. So it's kind of mm. like, uh, what's that game? Uh, like when people leave like little hints and you have to go. Clue? No. no, 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 no. What? Like a, like a search. What's that game? Taboo. No, oh my God, y'all. <laughs> are you talking about a scavenger hunt? No, yes, yeah, scavenger hunt. Blues Thank clues? you. And people leave hints, and you go, Blues Clues? My dog. Oh, wait, it wasn't. It's a scavenger hunt. Wait, I'm trying to think. Was he involved in some child stuff? No, no? okay. No, I just had to check because yeah. there are some of those, some of those uh, she, children she's people. Not she's not off. Man. Yeah, she's not yeah, off. Yeah, she's not off. There are a lot of those children people that are turned out to be pedophiles, man. Yeah. yeah. Going Fucking weirdos. Like, like okay. booty this holes. this this question is going to sound crazy, and I'm, I'm going to pose this to both of you, but yeah. uh, it's only because I want to know if if you picked up on it. Do you think um, Kanye's uh, dabbled in cocaine? 100%. Uh, a lot of the celebs have dabbled in cocaine, I feel like. The, the, sh the booger sugar? Now, do you... <laughs> Devil's lettuce. Okay. Booger sugar. Yeah, booger sugar. <laughs> now, now, now <laughs> I, I'll pose this next question. Yes. He he references a lot of times coming up with his beer being white and, and uh, kissed wh whomever, and he can taste cocaine. Who who do we think he, he's kissing or... One of those models he was messing with prior to Kim? Mm. Think prior? I don't think Kim does the. the I'm, I'm, I'm not saying Kim. I'm, no, he's saying I'm, that I'm, he's, oh, he's saying is he inferring to infidelity? Yeah, that's that's oh. that's that that was the one of the hidden things <laughs> I, I got from. It. Yeah, that definitely went over your head. That's that's one of the hidden things I, I think I got it. from it is that he he hints a lot at infidelity in this album. A lot, and dealing with multiple mind-altering substances like cocaine and and all types of other things. And then even in the beginning of the record, um, and that's why I think he, he he does deal with substance abuse. In the beginning of the when this whole record starts, he talks about, you know, uh, this is this is a high that, that can't come down. This is like it's an uncomparable high. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was messing with people before Kim, no? He could have been out there with Amber doing crazy stuff. Could, could. But, I mean, I just thought it was interesting that it comes out now. Listen, man, I guess as you get older, you just say, F it, man. This is, this is me. Well, didn't he also uh, make a reference in one of the songs about how Kim got upset about all the shit he was doing with his tweets and stuff? Well, that was the and thing. And then he was just kind of like, well, you can bounce if yeah, you want what, to. Yeah, that's wouldn't leave. That's wouldn't leave, yeah. Yeah. which I do. I like that record. Um, I thought it was very open. And, and I, liked, uh, I liked the fact that um, when we talked about Kim, that... He knows how much it's impacting her, and I think he did that song purposely for two yeah. reasons. One, obviously, to you know, tell his wife, "Yo, like I care. Like it's <laughs> not, it's it's not that I'm just out here wild and don't care about what you what you're saying, or how you feel." Mm -hmm. um, and and the other part of it, I think he did that record to let people know that she's not on board with his actions. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. so because um, that's been a lot of question, uh, it's been a lot of speculation yeah, that you know he controls Kim, her she, he controls her, and that Kim is on board with everything that he does and supports him, and 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 clearly, you know, she's not with the shits. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Between the him yeah, saying, fucking up my money." Yeah, between I just saying, know you, what it you sounds like the bag and with uh, Kim yelling at Kanye. Oh my uh, god! Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> What are you it, doing? Yeah, but it's got to be. I something. feel like she cusses though. Yeah, I think she. Yeah, I definitely think she cusses. I, I, she, I, I got her. Spasm. Wow. If I'm being honest, if I'm being honest, I, I I definitely think that that's the case. Um, and what was the other record that I thought that was uh, interesting? Join with Charlie Wilson. Yeah. So the Charlie Wilson record. Um, with uh, no 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 not Charlie Wilson record. Are we it, talking about Ghost Town? Ghost Town. Ghost yeah. Town. Ghost Town. Um, what are, what are you, what are your thoughts on Ghost Town? That was Cuddy. I thought that was Chance the Rapper on the. <laughs> Well, um, originally I thought the same thing only because a leak came out and it said that it was Chance the Rapper, but it, it was it was Cuddy on there. Oh. What did, what did you think of Cuddy on on there? I mean, it was it was. It was brief. Cuddy and who else? Because it was somebody else on there too, right? Uh, yeah. Hold on, I have it. Uh, There's a few people on. 
Oh, seven mm-hmm. shakes and somebody else on that record. Um, I thought it was, I, I enjoyed the record, man. I like when they do the. Uh, I think that when they do the ballet chorus is on that record. and and um, when they do the bridges and they have different artists come in and do the hooks. Yeah, I think I think that's a dope concept. I just I just like that approach. You know what's interesting? Like the setup of like the the track listing, it 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 seems like it goes from like um like like I said, crazy far out there thoughts, comments filled with sorrow and anger and then at towards the end of the project it's like coming to some sort of peace coming to some sort of acceptance um some understanding of um previous thoughts and how it applies to his family Mm -hmm. because like you know it starts with with, i thought about killing you and that's like the one side of kanye talking to the other side and then yikes is like the the more uh, manic depressive side of Kanye talking more within yikes and then it's just like then you get to the point where like the me he, then he goes into like all mine and, and wouldn't leave and how like now he's addressing how like the media because of those dualities the media think he's crazy his 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 own wife is saying stuff about him and saying like you can leave but then he's realizing like the most precious things that he has is his family and then and then he kind of gets to a point where he's like, you know what, this is who I am and I have to accept it, even if the media calls me crazy or anything. It's like, you towards the end of the project, he finds some sort of comfort and peace, and that's why he's like, you know, uh, uh, with um, the last project, or not even the last project, but but like Ghost Town, he he then starts the journey of self-love and forgiveness. I, I looked at this like it was a movie. Yeah. Well, if, I, I was going to say he turned a 12-step program into an album. Yeah. Because... <laughs> That with the way you just broke it down it sounds like twelve yeah. steps to me. Like for me, <laughs> I, I looked at it like a uh, like he wrote a musical score, in the sense. Like if you look at the different things and the different sounds, that was the first first thing I got from it was mm-hmm. like this sounds like, you know, like yikes to me sounds like uh, it reminded me of uh, Black Panther when Black Panther, you first see him in, in in the movie and he jumps on top of the car and then uh, the, the record comes on. That's you what said I'm yikes? Like, yeah. Movie? You said yikes when you saw that in the movies? No. He's like, yikes? No, I didn't. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, say yikes. I didn't say yikes like that. Oh my God. And why did you move your shoulders like that? Because um, that's what you did, yikes? Yeah, no, I didn't say it like that. Um, yeah, there's some extra tea today. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's that was my thing. So, I mean, the, uh, my, my only... Um, my only thing for me uh, it, that's lackluster for this is lyrics. I don't, I don't think he really tried hard. Um, and that could be because it was a deadline. I know he was getting scrutinized from, the, you know, the first time around he was supposed to release a project on a certain date, didn't meet that deadline, internet killed him, uh, media outlets killed him. So maybe that was the case. But lyrically, like even the beginning of the, uh, of the uh, I Thought About Killing You, there's parts in the record where he doesn't even... He's just talking. He's scatting. Like he's not yeah. even finishing the the the, the, re- the record, the 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 verbiage. You know what I'm saying? He so probably just took conversations and broke them down into lyrics. That's what I felt like. Like I felt yeah. like in the beginning he was talking to himself. Then he was having a conversation with outside people. Then he was having a conversation with his wife. Then he had a conversation with 100%. his daughter. And then he's having a, again a conversation with himself. Hundred percent. Yeah, I don't think that was his aim. The lyrics. Huh? I think content was his aim. No, uh, I, I, I'm not saying that. I'm not no, saying I'm by saying, no, I'm saying, uh, by far do yeah. I ever think that. Even even though I did enjoy the bar, the uh, the Russell Simmons bar. Oh, the Me Too. The, me, the, me, the me Too. Yeah, he got Me Too. Now and I was like, ooh. Yeah, the Me Too. The Me Too bar was hard. <laughs> um, this is so. This one I wanted to ask you guys, because um, I was thinking about shots. Um, what kind of shots? Britney shots. Nah, not Britney shots. <laughs> she is, she, yeah, she, not, she's, not, a, she's not, a sniper. Not the Brit snipe shots. Not those, a, not, the, not those shots. <laughs> those are not the lyrics. Uh, where is it? <laughs> Um, uh, it was a, it was a light skin. Uh, oh, bar. I know what you're talking. Oh, about. wait, 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 hey, I got, I got, I got. Because what was uh, that bar? He's talking about Aubrey. I took a screenshot. Poo, poo, I think. Who, by there the way, go. is missing. There you go. Perfect. Aub- Thank you. Aub- so, so the bar, the bar reads: uh, A true soul of Ice Cube, too close to snipe you. Truth told, I like you. Too bold to type you. Too rich to fight you. Calm down, you light skin. Who is he talking to? Aubrey. Now, do you think he's talking to Arby, or do you think he's talking to Cole? Ooh. Could be the, both on purpose. Ooh, the, the plot thickens. Yeah. Hmm, the Bob Marley impossible. And the only reason to bring people up to speed, again, Cole did not take kindly to, you know, his conversations with Kanye being released, and, um, you know, he, he felt a way about it that 
again, he didn't want to elaborate on uh, during the Angie Martinez interview. Um, and then obviously the the, the um, obvious person would be Drake, just considering the feud that's going on. Yeah. The typing part is also a, a double playing too, because he didn't text. J. Cole. Correct. Called, he they called, called each other. They called each other. And then also not texting Drake because he's not, he didn't jump into he that. He could beef. be talking about Cole. Correct. It could be both. Correct. Yeah. So I, I, I'm, I'm, and I know we probably will never know because Drake, uh, not Drake, uh, Kanye is not beef man. Like he, he's not beef man. So I'm, I'm not. He'd be a. Well, at the, didn't at the, at the end. How do you, like, hold on. How do you not pause? Pause. Pause. Him? pause. Let, me, let me, let me clear that up right the fuck now. That's wow. Beef man. Pause. Pause. <laughs> With cheese. Pause. Pause. <laughs> and bananas. Everyone slow down. <laughs> Everyone settle down. Pause. Pause. That's wow. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about killing me after that. <laughs> wow, that's a wild statement. Beef, man. Um, but he, he's not—he's wow. he's not for the back and Yikes. forth verbal assaults. You immature imbeciles. Yo, but you know what? I got away. I kind of laughed though because I felt like. Kaye within the project when he did kind of those jabs, he's he's that kid who goes and smacks you and then runs away and then hides behind their mom like. Beef, and then like, oh yeah, I, I'll be like, love, love everyone, self love, we're Yo, all good. If somebody <laughs> slapped me, and said, yeah, if somebody slapped me, goes beef. That's wild. That's wild. That's wild. And then he runs behind his mom, and then be like, yeah. no, 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 it's all good, it's all love, we're okay. Yeah, love, crazy. peace, everybody. Lead, that's what we need to be. Love, lead with love. Um, <laughs> so hold on. So just to, just to su- just to sum up this part, um, do you guys think that? Um, <laughs> Kanye created this body of music to express his emotional struggles and or demons, but he attempted to hide it behind, oh, excuse me, he, he attempted to hide it behind clever musical compositions and transitions. Yeah, I think this is his Hear My Dear. You ever hear that album by Marvin Gaye? Marvin Gaye. Hear My Dear. I think this is his album. I... Um, Aaron doesn't know what we're talking about, so I'll just talk to you. <laughs> You about the snipe, you already see it. <laughs> Beef. <laughs> Except I'm, I'm not going to be running away and saying self love. I'm going to be like, fuck you. <laughs> um, honestly, <laughs> this may sound weird, but if, if, to me, it felt like it was like a journal entry, like a diary. Like it just felt like he he took pages out of his his journal or diary, especially because like you know as someone who has gone to therapy as a kid, when my parents split, um, one of the things they tell you is to write how you feel and just everything down in in a book, and it, and that's what it felt like. It felt like the musical composition of like a journal, yeah, like a therapy journal. Well, I mean, um, I'm still gonna digest it some more and <laughs> see how I feel about it because God. <laughs> It, there's so much. There's so much. Content. I know. I heard it. E. Right. No, no, no. Y'all remember when? Um, oh my God, which which uh, Simmons brother? When they had that TV show and he sat in the tub and he would text at <laughs> the end of the reality TV show. He's like, oh, today, yeah, red, red. He's like, oh, red, red. Yeah. yeah. He's like, oh, today I had a hard time with my wife, but we came to realization realization that love is great. And then I put my face in some titties and came up, and my beard was white. <laughs> like, <laughs> listen, that would, man, that would help. <laughs> All love, that Kanye would, West. <laughs> Chris, that would help. That would that would fix things, right? Yeah. Um, that, would fi- that would fix a lot of stuff. Well, shit. Speaking with leading with love, um, did y'all see the tweet that Kanye tweeted out about uh, leading with love and that it, he was not for uh, beef? Did you guys see that? Yeah, that's why. That's that's where I got the part of smacking and beef and then running, just be like, no, it's all love, dog. Yeah, self love. Yeah, so um, very very disappointed in Aubrey. Yeah, so I so let's let's get to that. So first, oh, before we go good. there, um, very you know keep keeping up with the the fiasco of uh, that is Drake and and push it. Uh, Drake released a response, um, but uh, more of a statement in reference to the uh, blackface images that came out. Um, if if I'm being honest, um, I think between that and I know Pusha uh, text or tweeted something about uh, that Drake was uh, shopping 100k to anyone that had information. He's scrambling. I, th- I think he doesn't know what to do at this point right he's now. He's Clarence. <laughs> yeah. He's Clarence. Yeah, eight he's miles. Clarence right now, man. Like I, I, I don't think he really knows what to do he's or how to. Pro- he's never been in this situation. 
Like when you he like think Man. about it, Drake has always been the top Clarence. dog, and and Listen. that was Clarence. So so can't my, be going at these old folks. Some of them, you know, <laughs> they hit with internet too. Some of them, yeah. Nas, so are you hit with the internet? A little bit, <laughs> a little bit. I see you. I see you. I see you. <laughs> um, so fucking, what was I gonna say? Oh, so do you? N- number one, do we think that because um, I didn't read that that tweet as if. Uh, I read it. I kind of read it two ways. Um, first, I read it like, "All right, fucking, the beef is over." So, I don't think that Kanye reached out, and this is his first thoughts. I thought, uh, I mean, I don't think Drake reached out. I think Kanye probably reached out. But then I thought about it like, "All right," or it could be interpreted as on their side, and and listening to Push's interviews as of late, he's saying, "Yo, it's nothing more to say." Like, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't got nothing more to say, even though he keeps saying. Following it up with, well, yo, if if Drake does respond, I, I'm ready layers. to do whatever. I got layers. <laughs> so I, I looked at that tweet as if, um, you know, Kanye had a, a conversation with Push, like, fam, like, it, enough's I'm enough. Gonna like, be, I'm gonna be very you, mad if you, Kanye had that conversation. I think I think he did. Um, I don't for, I don't think that that Drake called and was like, yo, can we squash the beef? Like, <laughs> like I don't think that. I think Drake is too prideful. But I, like I said in the beginning of this, I think that Drake is scrambling. Like he. I, the first thing you 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 know it's bad when you don't release a response. Like Drake is very timely. You know we saw how he handled Meek Mill. Yeah. We saw how he handled um, just engaging with different artists. Even with, when it came down to just uh, Sublimes, he's he's very quick at that. For his first move after such an impactful record against him to come out for him to be like, all right, here's a statement about that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like. Want to it, apologize? It, I, I, yeah, I don't. I don't think <laughs> yeah, that he was really. Not an apology. That, that was, wasn't that. Well, yeah, that wasn't yeah, an that's, apology. That was the problem. It wasn't an yeah, apology. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't get an apology. If anything, I got a reinforcement of the image. I got a uh, hey, I did this, and this was the objective behind it. I was trying to bring awareness to uh, black actors struggling. I'm, I'm just telling you how it reads, and, yeah, and that's yeah. what me and Aaron. I, I'm, I'm saying how it reads. It's the, yeah, it, there's a problem. What he said though. Yeah. Like, he so going like even when you're talking about the tweet. I also see it as Kanye saying, like, I said all I had to say. I'm done. Mm-hmm. Like, beef between them two. Um, Pusha, I feel like Pusha is just at a point where he don't give a fuck. And yeah. will, if Drake comes back in any shape or form, he's going to go back at it. Push is on <clears> one. <throat> but the problem with what Drake said in terms of, like, you know, trying to provide, like, he doesn't understand that, like, uh, like, and, and I get with like the two, was it the the two black guys that line and all that stuff how they utilize these things that were meant to suppress and and be negative towards black people in a way that brings light to it. But the problem that Drake has to understand is that you, as a light skinned person, you have what I call light skin privilege. Mm-hmm. When, you know, there is still issues when it comes to people who have different um, skin tones and how some people get more more opportunities and others. There's actually even a study that was done via MIT and how the perception of light skinned people in the eyes of white people is a little different than dark. They were saying that like in this study they did, white people viewed light skinned people smarter than dark skin, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. So I think like for him, it's like I, I get what you're trying to do, but you yourself have to understand the 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 sort of privilege that you have, and understand that the even within the uh, the 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 spectrum of color within the black community, you have to understand like what you cannot do and what you can do and what can seem offensive. Blackface in general, that's offending. Like yeah. no one should be doing that. Didn't it's crazy. Did do that too? Hmm? Her and Ted Danson. Ted, yeah. Even Beyonce got slack for it when she did that in a shoe. The shoe. Like yeah. you, she the did black, black she it, she did darker for like the representation. She, she, she went darker. Her yeah. whole body would looked at it as a black, black face. face. Black face. But she still got slack for yeah, it. She though. still got slack. That's for just it. something that yeah. you just you should not touch at all. Yeah. Um. But then also like for him to do that. But then also for him to say that he's never felt black enough and this and that. Like it's just there's so much confusion and just yeah, like he doesn't understand where he that was the victim. like stands. He was trying to get, but, trying to get the but, victim but, role. But, but yeah. But that's mm-hmm. where I look at it like. You're now seeing confused Drake. Could push a punch in him square in the mouth. Yeah, like I, I and like <laughs> we we said it early on, and I don't, I, I really don't think anyone <laughs> saw this coming. That yeah. push would go this hard. Pause. I love it so early on in the beef. Like yeah. I, I love it. I'm not, I'm not mad at it. I, but 
I just don't think that that um, I don't think that Drake was prepared. Well, I, and, and now it's like, yeah. all right, what do you do? Like you put out all of these these claims and you put out all these statements. Uh, how do you respond? So if, if if I'm if I'm Drake, my advice to Drake would be to just lay it out all on the table. That's the only way to kind of you can't go. Uh, I don't think you can you can go to um, a back to back. Not after these allegations, you got to address them. I don't think you could. Um, you can't do the memes that he 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 does or the little pokes that he would normally do between interviews or yeah. or he has to address it head on. If I'm him, I would at this point assume that Push knows everything, and I would just air it all out and and address it. Eight and, mile it. And, and eight mile it. That's what I would do. And then you content and bar him to death. That's what I'm. That's what I'm doing. I if I'm him, I can't accept that from Aubrey, man. I can't accept his little uh, letter. And I never felt black enough after all this. You know, I'm tucking in my napkin. I'm mobbing like this, yeah. and I'm a tough guy. And I'm from the six, and we're aiming for the head. You can't do all this tough talk, and then when you get punched in the mouth, it's like, oh well. You now don't know how to act. I, I'm the victim, and yeah. you know, you should feel sorry for me. Nah, now, dog. Now the other no. thing, though, too, um, which could the 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 playing the the uh, the black uh, car and the black face. Did you see the recent tweets that were dug up on on Pusha T? I think they made that's a big to do about nothing. He shouldn't have said it, I'm, but wait, it, it well, looked, well, it, it say what crazy. it is. So oh, the Sambo and so hold on, let me go to this. So there was a, a and, and that's what's so bad about. Um, like just Twitter, and we talk about this a lot. Like we talked about with uh, that with JD from Def Jam, actually about how artists need to really clean up their social media. So a tweet yeah. came out uh, that happened in 2004, where Pusha tweeted, um, "When your black flight attendant is rude to you before he realizes uh, you are in first class, now you will dance for me, Sambo." He then says, "You will." Uh, oh, sorry. Hold on. Oh, he then says, uh, "You will smile and dance the entire flight for me, Tom." And then he says, "And you better clap." Your goddamn feet on damn uh, on demand, you monkey. So he quote, quoted, yeah, quote. Uh, no, he didn't quote monkey. He, oh, he didn't. He no, didn't ex, ex, exclamation points would follow that. Oh. So mm. I, I I looked at that like, ugh. I think that just looks crazy now because yeah. because of, of Roseanne. Well, no, it looks it, it it's twofold. Outside of Roseanne, he th his assault on on Drake was talking about. He he said a lot about like, yo, fam, you you can no longer speak on black issues. Like you're dead mm -hmm. because of the blackface pictures. So I look at that twofold now. Like, fam, those those tweets don't really look cool. Like, but it kind of goes also like, and and I'm and I'm asking this as a legit question. Do you feel like? Kind of going to back to what I was saying, how there is certain privileges or certain things that is that happens within society when you're darker or lighter. Do you feel like because Drake is light, more light skin, that there's certain things that he should just not even be doing at all that he, that Pusha may be in referring to? No, no, no. no. When no. you black, you black. Yeah, I think yeah. If you black, you black. And I think that <laughs> that that was Pusha's his his agenda of 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 that picture. He specifically put that picture in. Number one, because everyone knows what blackface is and how disgusting it know. is, or, or should, should know, know. correct? Yeah. Should know. You're right. And then uh, he's a black artist. Uh, Drake is a black artist. Uh, well, at least that's how we perceive him, even though he's mixed. He's he's black, yeah. right? So you look at him in that scope, and then you have this damn near heartbreaking picture come out, and it's like, ugh, you can't speak on it. So I think he's he's speaking in general, like, fam, you're a black man, and you did blackface. Your your black heart is revoked. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy when you still like just thinking about that's that. That's what I'm saying. When you really when that's you really crazy. say it, that's that's it it's the truth. It's the same thing. You you can uh it's the same thing when you when you think Stacey Dash. Like well, she ain't never do blackface. She jumped she, she, she jumped out the window a lot. No, but she, but she, she profited she, off of she, black she people BET and then turns and around then and turn, talks shit. Yeah, correct, you get you get it revoked. Correct. You get revoked. Well, you get revoked. I don't know if I'm equating that to blackface. No, uh, we're not. No, I'm not. We're not equating, equating it to, to blackface, but we're saying that she, what she did was, she used a black entertainment network back when it was owned by a black person, yeah. profited off Bob of Johnson. that, didn't say shit. The second that white people grabbed her, then all of a sudden she's saying all this crazy nonsense. Yeah, yeah, like, so come on, it, you, it, you. That's like, that's like saying like, yo, you can't make your career off of the backs of black people and then go around and then just totally shit on black people. Like yeah. you sound crazy. Yeah. It, it, it just, 
So I, I don't know. Um, I, I just wonder. I, I really had, um, and we talked about this on the emergency episode. I had Drake responding Friday. You were wrong. Well, I, yeah. You were wrong. I was definitely wrong. Yeah. I, Next I was, Friday. Yeah. Like the movie, there's sequels. <laughs> Yeah, yeah so 100% right. I, I, I think I think the longer he waits, the he's not going to respond. He's dead. He's Clarence. He's up on stage holding the mic. I, I don't think he'll not respond. He's trying to find. You I think he's trying to find something. I think he's trying to find something. Or he's trying to find an angle again. This is the first time where you've seen him in such a vulnerable state lyrically. Well, TikTok, man. Yeah, like the, I just think the longer he waits, the the harder it will be. Yeah, like it's the same thing when Meek finally released his record, which I thought was a, a great record. It just it was like, fam, you waited like two weeks. Like we're we're off it. Like you you, you lost. You lost. You Aub- lost. Aubrey, you lost. I think if you I don't I, I don't know. The longer he waits, the Negro did blackface. What were you thinking? Yeah, I, I don't know, man. Um, and a Jim Crow T shirt. Yeah. So, um, well, I mean, yeah, I I, I, I really don't know. I, I don't know what else you could really do to come back from that. And it's, and his father's still denying the son. Saw that. Well, yeah, I mean, um, <laughs> my grandbaby. I don't know what you're talking about, sir. <laughs> yeah, but Wendy Williams. <laughs> hey, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about, sir. <laughs> I mean, that's his pops, though. You figure he gonna ride for his son. He's not gonna throw him under the boat. Steve Harvey too, the bus, so. rather. Yeah, well, especially he. He's you know, Drake's been helping his dad with that song he did and all that. You know, gotta help. They gotta help the son out. Don't do that. <laughs> gotta help the son out. What? Do, is Drake fall out of song? Yeah. Yeah, he had a record. Yeah, he out. had yeah, he had, a record he had his own record out. So, um, damn man, Steve oh. Harvey suits. That shit's crazy. Uh, well, speaking of records coming out, um, it's rumored that uh, Justice League has a clips record in the tuck. Mm. Did you guys hear? Um, I sent it to the chat, but you guys probably didn't listen to it. Did you hear uh, Malice's new record? No, I did no. not. Damn, y'all shady. No, I thought it was no Malice. No, it's no Malice, but I mean, I'm, you, you know, what I'm talking about. No, um, I didn't listen. There's too many things going on. Yeah, it happened things. that text. Group. Well, listen to the record. But um, I wonder, I wonder what a modern day clip sounds like. Be it that uh, Malice now is very spiritual, even though he still raps really, really well. If you listen to the record, I, I like the record. The record was was pretty dope. But um, I wonder what saved, quote unquote, saved Malice and a modern day Pusha sounds like. Because Pusha's still rapping about flipping birds and. and and busting moves, Ugh. and and <laughs> yeah, Ugh. and then uh, you know we can only imagine what his content malice is going to be like. So if that if this does come to fruition, it does see the light of day. What do we think that that's going to sound like? I wonder what malice said to push him when he heard Virginia Williams. Like, well, as a twin, like when he's looking at his brother, like yo fam, are you going to handle this? That that's well, I don't know. I mean, if if there was a <laughs> there was a live stream. Um, where Malice was on a treadmill and I guess he was answering fam questions and someone asked him the obvious question of, yo, what do you think of, of the of the beef between, you know, Push and, and Drake? And he said, um, you know, it's good for hip hop, which everyone can agree on that. And he said, um, you know, do you, what do you think is, is going to happen? And he was like, you know, I haven't, I, which I found very interesting. Um, he was like, I haven't, I haven't listened to the album yet. Meaning pushes album. He was like, I didn't even know what people were talking about when it came to the the mm-hmm. artwork until you guys told me. He's like, I didn't know, which it kind of let me know that he really is kind of far removed. Yeah, he's really yeah. far removed. Like I thought he would have still been kind of in the mix. Like I wasn't surprised even at the listening party that he wasn't there or anything like that. Like I didn't, I didn't expect anything like that. But I thought at least you know it's your brother. You want to hear what he's doing. He didn't hear any of this. So for him to kind of jump back in now at this juncture. Is uh pretty interesting. Some things are trigger points for people. Yeah, I like, shall not shan't mention Virginia Williams, man. Yeah, don't do it. Don't talk about my wife, man. Yeah, do you think if <laughs> Virginia Williams is not mentioned in that record, <laughs> that Drake is in the place that he's in now and and forcing uh push to do what he needs Imagine to do? He's at home in on, in a six, like mm. oh my god, why would I say her name? I don't know if Push would <laughs> respond. Huh? I don't know if Push would respond if, if his fiance was not in there. Oh no! I definitely got push responding. I don't think he would have went as hard. Yeah, I don't think he would have went as hard. I think it. I think there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff happening, and I think there was a a, a tipping point that forced, you know, push to kind of go this route. But I don't know that he would have responded this you ever, hard. Remember like, in high school, he's like. You see somebody that you don't like, but you don't want to fight them. Yeah. But your man got a problem with him. Yeah. He's like, yo, if that dude jumps in, 
I'm going crazy. Yeah. Well, that dude, he mentions you. you yeah, I think that's crazy. what pushes. Yeah. I think that's what happened with Pusha. Pusha's like, I'm not going to start it, but if he starts, and, but, and, well, that's that's yeah, that's how Push <laughs> keeps moving with these interviews. And I, I not for nothing, I'm thoroughly enjoying Push's interviews as of late. Like he's talking that shit. Like even with that big boy interview, they was like, yo, so what do you think? You, you know, are you worried? He's like, I ain't worried about nothing. I ain't worried about nothing. No skeletons. No, skeletons. no skeletons, B. <laughs> like layer. And he did the layers. Yeah, like he, 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 yeah. Did, did you see how he layers. air air peeled back the layers? He's like, it's layers. It's like it's layers. <laughs> So, I don't know. It's going to be interesting. Oh, my god! It's just going to be interesting. What about ASAP? Did he say ASAP might have been the one? Oh, oh yeah, no, he got it a- was uh, that... I think they said like ASAP Rocky was the one that they said um, that he spilled, told, the spilled the beans with yeah, the but, kid. But he, he didn't. But um, he tweeted something, and I have that as well. He tweeted and said... Um, how can I... Where is this at? Uh, <laughs> so, he tweeted, and, and, and I quote, Get off my dick. Um, <laughs> keep my name out that gossip blog shit. Uh, woes, uh, providing tips. I don't know what the fuck. Quidditch ass niggas. Quidditch. Quidditch. Quidditch? What right. is Quidditch? I don't know what that means. Harry Riding Potter. Harry Potter stick. Games. Fine two. The snitch. Harry Potter p. Come on. The man. snitch. Isn't it like the? Isn't that the the ball or something? Yeah, I have yeah. never. Yeah, I don't know. He he lost me with all watched that, that Harry sor- Potter. He lo- Harry Potter is actually really good. He he, he lost me with no, all this sor- sorcery it shit. Is. But the books um, too. yeah, but um, so he's exonerated. So the mystery <laughs> person that uh, revealed the dirt, which so, one of his artists who haven't haven't gotten pushed yet. Yeah, <laughs> and then and then I'm also seeing uh, rumors of of uh, Quentin Miller and and. And uh oh him about to reveal Yeah, about to reveal more shit. Quentin just gotta chill, man. If I'm him, I'm 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 chilling. Like yeah. I don't know why he he's doing this, but whatever. And then well, maybe I, he's tired of his name being brought up and I'll get tired too. I'll be like, listen, this is the facts. I'm done. And just let so it be. Quentin, did you get paid? Yes. Shut up. Some good shut up. Yeah, like <laughs> I, I don't I don't think um and I can see what you're saying. Like you're probably getting tired of getting dragged into some I shit. I would get that. tired too. But the origin of it comes from you. When no. you really when you really think about it, this whole shit starts because what was that a Vlad interview? Yeah. Like But it's not anything that like you did specifically. It's just kind of like it's like if your man's does uh, it's it's like if you have a homeboy and and they do something and because someone's beefing with you they're like oh oh but your but your homeboy's the one that lent you thousand dollars and you get that car or whatever it's just kind of like guilty dog by association. why are you it's like dog I didn't do you're guilty by association man it's a but I don't think but I don't even think well I don't even think they're I don't know I just don't think they're like dogs like that I just think he's just someone that goes writes the songs and then goes about his day that's that's really what I got about it. And especially the way Drake said it, he's like, you know, I was just trying to help the guy out. So I don't know. Sure you were. Which I low key thought was a little disrespectful. The just way trying he's to help said, him out. Yeah, I thought it was disrespectful. Do, a little do bit. this little homeless dude a bone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That that ver- I ain't gonna lie. That verbiage probably would have pissed me off a little bit too. Yeah, the way he- I'm like, nigga, I'm the one that's writing your yeah, what? Yeah, he was yeah, eating top lie. ramen. Until yeah, I, until I yeah. Saw that's him. how I read that. He's like, he, he was working at Kroger's. I'm just trying to help him out. <laughs> it's like it's almost like I was trying. He was a bum on the street trying yeah. to give him change. Yeah. That's, that's how I looked at it. It's actually, so. Publix. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, if he was real, he should. It was Publix, nigga. <laughs> like, that's what he should have did, but whatever. Um, all right, but I mean, I guess that's our episode for today. Um, let us know what you think uh, between, you know, what are your thoughts uh, on Kanye's album? Give us your reviews. Give us your favorite records. What did you pick up uh, that may, maybe we didn't mention? Um, and then also, can the Cavs come back? Um, Negative. <laughs> what's going to happen with JR? Is he going to be in the right state of mind for game two? China, welcome back. Yeah, and then also uh, let us know what you guys think Drake's, Drake's next move should be at this point. Retirement. Um, <laughs> yeah. Stupid. Um, oh, my God. Check us out, Grassroots Pie, on uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, always on the YouTube link there in the description is going to be the group me chat where we discuss all of our current topics and current topics and just shoot the shit. Uh, so let us know what you think. Join. Subscribe and subscribe, 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 subscribe. But yeah, I can't say it. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Bodied it. All right. Uh, <laughs> with that said, I'm uh, Brandon Killer BH All. I'm Aaron Ashley Simon. And I'm regular Nas, man. Holla at me. <laughs> I want to add a holla at me. Fuck out of here. <laughs> and, <laughs> Keep we that in. <laughs> and we out. And we out.